I actually reached out to a good friend of mine for you, Ohana. This is the part here that people don't understand is right there, as you can see it in the background. If you look really good, it's impossible for water to run up. It takes about four or five days for it to drain. Bang, bang. Well, this is Tiki Falls. Aloha, my Ohana. It is your boy, the Hawaiian Fish Keeper. First off, let me just say, I hope everyone out there had a very lovely Merry Christmas. Like I said in my previous video, Melikilikimaka Ho'ole Makikiho. We have a Happy New Year coming up, and I just can't wait for 2021, especially making content for you guys. Speaking of making content for you guys, feel free to share and don't forget to like this video too as well. Helps the channel out. Speaking of helping the channel out, YouTube's analytics are telling me that more than half of you guys that watch my videos are not even subscribed. This is the perfect opportunity to hit that subscribe button. Next to that subscribe button is a little bell. Hit that bell, turn it on. It's just gonna notify you when I upload a new video. And then you're part of my Ohana. And like everybody else who subscribed, you'll be cool too. So I figured I'd come outside in the backyard since it's not raining. It's been raining for the last couple days here where I live. Uh, pretty hard and being that it's been raining I've been getting some comments from you guys who live here locally about me doing an update on hydrostatic pressure and Tiki Falls which is my outdoor pond if you're new to the channel this is Tiki Falls this is the pond that I built in my backyard with my bare two hands not only that though if you haven't seen any of these videos on the build I'll leave a playlist up above right there okay click that playlist there it's Tiki Falls 3.0 it's gonna show you how I connected these two ponds together this was the original pond and this is the build so I made this little canal here and now now we just doubled the size where I have various koi and goldfish here in the pond. So we're going to talk a little bit about hydrostatic pressure. Some of you guys may be saying to yourself, what in the hell is hydrostatic pressure? Well, I'm going to go ahead and kind of break it down for you. All right. So the soil underneath this pond liner here, the soil here where I live is like a hard base clay. So I want to say maybe the first foot and a half is dirt. It's pretty easy to dig through. And then you hit this hard clay, which is super hard to dig through. Now, when we have heavy rain here in Sacramento, the rain will hit the ground, obviously, and it will slowly work its way under the pond liner. It's just what water does. Now, if you have ground like I have, which is a hard base clay, it takes about four or five days for it to drain into the ground because of that clay. It's so thick and hard, it holds the water pretty long before it actually starts to go into the soil. So when we have heavy rain that is just coming down and it's pouring, that water builds up and builds up, causing hydrostatic pressure. Hydro meaning water static meaning static and then pressure which is it rising up there is a way on handling this problem every season it happens to me guys i have hydrostatic pressure and what that does to the liner is it starts to lift the liner up and it forms a big bubble i'll show you some video on bubbled liner for ponds check it out here are a couple examples of hydrostatic pressure. As you can see, the pond liner there bubbled up. That's water that's trapped under the pond liner. Crazy, right? As you can see in the middle, that's what my pond looks like, just like that. So basically, you see what it does. It reconstructs the whole pond. It'll lift up this filter here and, and flop it over to the side. It'll push everything off. It just, it, it sucks. It really does. If you look really good, right here is the perforated pipe. It starts here. It's under the pond liner. It goes through the canal, it runs parallel right through here. And this is the part where people get a little confused. It's this section here. All the way up, we got the elbow. This little section here goes up about nine and a half inches. It actually, from the bottom of the pond, is an elbow. It goes up and then another elbow that goes over, as you guys saw in that video. This is the part here that people don't understand. How does it go up? There's no way water doesn't travel up. Well, it does when there's enough pressure here in the pond. It's got to go somewhere. That's where the little holes in the perforated pipe are to go over the top here. And then it's gravity fed. It actually runs a little slight downhill and it's going underneath this path walkway. Comes out over here and then there's another elbow right here. Okay, so I have another elbow. It 
actually leads this way, it drains out right in this section. Now, right in this area, there is a drainage pipe that runs underground and it goes all the way to the front yard. So in one shot, this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take a cruise and walk, okay? This is all gonna be one shot, so you can see. So we're in the backyard right now. We're gonna run over to this little fence here. And we're gonna open this fence. Okay. All right. And we're gonna walk, this is on the side of the house here. We're just gonna walk on the pathway here. Stick to the road. Okay, come up to the fence here. All right. Oh, if you look, this is the side of the house. If you look, there's a kid on a motorcycle. See that wet area there? That's the water from the hydrostatic pressure that's coming from under Tiki Falls. So let's get a closer look at it. And it's so obvious because it's dry everywhere on the street, as you can see, okay? So let's get a closer look at it. Still one shot. It's all one shot. We're gonna walk out over here. And this side of the property line is mine right here. All the way to this little fence goes out. And you can see that area there is all water and wet. So everywhere else is dry. If you look on the property, my neighbor sidewalk, neighbor sidewalk here, driveway everywhere here is completely dry except this area that's the drainage that actually leads to tiki falls it exits right in this area here underground and it slowly just dribbles out into the street into the sidewalk on the curb let's just get a, a better look at it so I felt it was super important that we got that all in one shot so you can see where the water comes from. You can see the spot here. Everywhere else is dry. As you can see, it actually rained ah, really heavy the last couple days or so, but all the sidewalk is pretty much dry. The only spot that is um, watery is right there, as you can see it in the background. So that just shows you where the water is actually draining from the hydrostatic pressure under the pond. Now it's super important that I let you guys know that the drainage underground that leads from the backyard to the front yard, I had nothing to do with that. That's just the standard drainage that comes uh, with the house, with the backyard. I just managed to find where it was and I actually ran that perforated pipe with the elbows and connectors and whatnot and led it to that drainage area. So it just drains automatically out to the front yard. So it makes it nice and convenient. Now I know some of you down in the comments of the video where I actually explain how I deal with hydrostatic pressure and setting up the whole perforated pipe, you guys were a little confused because you guys were saying things like, oh, it's impossible for water to run up. It can't run up. It's just, there's, there's no way. When there's pressure, it's gonna push that water up, okay? Now it's not going up six feet. It's only going up a foot. A foot and a half now if you needed to go up higher let's just say four feet you actually use a bigger perforated pipe that way you can drop a little submersible pump down in there and pump the water out other than that though that's how you do it when it's only like a foot or two you can actually just have that pressure push it up all right and i was trying to explain it to some of you guys down in the comments but hey you know i figured i'd just do a video and it's just easier for you guys to understand with the visual but not only that i actually reached out to a good friend of mine for you ohana that's my boy ralph over at pondscapes az he's actually going to break down hydrostatic pressure for you guys because he's a professional pond builder yeah that's what he does for a living beautiful works of art all right so without further ado my brother ralph go ahead and preach to the ohana what's up guys it's ralph with pondscapes out in arizona and i want to uh, chime in with uh, what mel is talking about on this video hydrostatic pressure you know to simplify things it is groundwater that needs a place to go so depending on your soil conditions like what mel is dealing with He's got a lot of clay in his uh, soil, so that it takes a long time for water to actually recede through that. In my area, on this particular project, uh, this is my house, this is nothing but sand around me. So we had a bunch of rain uh, in this sandy condition, that water is gonna pass through the soil. So I'm not gonna build pressure up under that liner. Now in Mel's situation, 
You've got a lot of rainfall uh, up there in Sacramento area. What happens is that groundwater is looking for somewhere to go. And what happens is it turns into uh, almost a waterbed effect. And it is trying to push itself out. So it's equalizing. And uh, what can happen with uh, smaller ponds is it can push your rock work, tumble your rock work around. So what Mel did is a, um, basically a French drain system, a pressure relief system. And uh, essentially, think about uh, Capri Sun. You pop the straw in a Capri Sun and you squeeze on it and that uh, juice flows out through that straw. So in a scenario with a pond, that juice has got to go somewhere and it actually is pushed up through ground pressure, hydrostatic pressure. So it travels upward through that drainage pipe and down and out. So I think Mel has had uh, some questions on how that works, how it's possible. This is not something new. Uh, this is a, a technique that a lot of uh, professional pond contractors use. So that's what uh, Mel did over here, there on his pond at Tiki Falls. So hopefully that clears things up. Uh, so it's not just coming from Mel, it's coming from a professional pond contractor. Mel, I hope that helps, buddy. Keep up the good work and aloha. See, I don't mess around. Don't let me pull the big guns on you. Bang, bang. bang, 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 bang. Thanks, Brother Ralph. I really appreciate it. I know the Ohana appreciates it. And I love the analogies, the waterbed analogy and the Capri Sun analogy. My boy just broke it down for us. But I totally get it. Why would you guys believe me, right? I mean, I'm no professional pond builder. That's why I had my boy, Ralph, over at Pondscape AZ. He's based out of Arizona. I'll have all of his links down in the description below. Go follow him on YouTube. Go check him out on Instagram. But not only that, though, go check out his videos on YouTube because he creates these beautiful works of art. I mean, natural looking ponds, beautiful water features. But not only that, though, he's a CAC, which is a certified Aquascape contractor. Now, if you don't know anything about Aquascape, like the company Aquascape, uh, let's see here. How can I explain it to you guys? It's almost like, uh, hmm. They're only the largest in the world when it comes to building ponds. Anyways, he's a certified Aquascape contractor, which means he does this for a living. Let me run some B-roll on some of the work that Ralph does over at Pondscape AZ. Hit the B-roll. Like I said, beautiful works of art. That's what Ralph creates. Man, my boy Ralph does not play. Go check out his YouTube channel. You can see all of his builds from start to finish. Awesome guy, great crew that he has too that works with him. He's not just a pond builder, he's more or less like a uh, an artist. That's what we'll call him. Guess what guys, guess what? We hit 10K, yes, 10,000 subscribers. I'm so humbled, I'm very thankful. Uh, I'm thankful to you, the Ohana. You guys are the driving force behind this channel. Um, couple thanks. I want to thank all the love and support my family has given me, my wife, uh, my kids, friends. Big shout out to my boy Evan IFG. I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to try to do the live stream this Friday. I figured it's got to be on a Friday, right? To celebrate Aloha Friday, which is January 1st, 
2021. Open up the new year with a live stream, celebrating 10K, having giveaways, some laughs, some Q&A, all that in the live stream, okay? So mark your calendars. I will keep you posted, not only on my Instagram account, but I'll keep you posted on the community tab on YouTube, all right? So check it out. It's in my channel. You'll see it says community. Click on community. I'll be doing updates and letting you know exactly when we're gonna have the live stream. I'm really trying to hold it down for this Friday, January 1st, 2021, all right? Other than that, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for all the love and support, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Much love and aloha.